getting back to exercise postpartum can be exhilarating and also kind of confusing. After a long pregnancy of walking around feeling like you have a fancy piece of china on top of your head, and I guess or in your belly, and you need to be extra careful with how you move, you're finally allowed to start doing stuff again. But then it's kind of confusing as to how much to do when and what's okay, especially in those early days. Hi, I'm Becky. Welcome to Wellness in the Pelvis. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and a mom, and I'm here to help you understand more about your body. Today, we're going to start talking about postpartum exercises in those early days, that first zero to six weeks or so. Slide on your tennies and let's shed some light on what's going on down there. First things first, you need to make sure you're taking care of your immediate needs. So as best you can, getting a little bit of sleep at a time, um, making sure that you're eating healthy foods, especially if you're nursing, making sure you're drinking plenty of water. And then of course, maybe most importantly, making sure that your mental health is in check. Um, because without all of those things, really getting back to any kind of exercise might not be super safe. Again, we're talking about the really early days postpartum, those first zero to six weeks. And so exercise here isn't really going to look like you are um, in the Olympic trials doing like the 800 meter sprint or something. Really, this is going to be a non-exhaustive list, but kind of a big picture um, look at things to help you understand. These are my priorities. These are the things you should be paying attention to to help get myself feeling put back together so I can take care of myself, my baby, and my home or, or you know whatever else around me. The number one thing that I think is an excellent idea for um, the first zero to six weeks after having a baby is going on walks. Um, you know, especially if it's in the warmer months or if you live in a, a warmer climate, getting outside, going on as many walks as you want. Keep it pretty short, um, especially in those early days. We might only be walking you know, around the block, maybe a quarter, half mile max. So let's talk about strengthening. In these early days, again, you're not going to be so worried about strengthening, like getting beefed up, man. Um, you're just trying to make sure that your core basically remembers how to work. So helping draw more actually awareness to your trunk and your core to help you feel like you're better connected with that part of your body because your anatomy is totally changed. And so... Um, getting reacquainted is actually much more important than really focusing on strengthening. Let's go top down with your core muscles. Um, so the first one being your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is your breathing muscle. And like I said, as baby was growing, you know, you probably noticed this. It got really hard to breathe. And so um, reintroducing, taking really deep breaths is going to help get that diaphragm to stretch back out. So that way, when you're ready to exercise again, especially if it's more cardiovascular stuff, your diaphragm is ready to move and do that job. Next down the line would be the abdominals. Think about not just like ugh, bracing those abs and trying to get a six pack back or something. You're, you're really just trying to think about activating um, your abdominals. So you're not sucking in, you're not pushing out. You hold that, let it go, hold it, let it go. Next would be the pelvic floor. I've read online, recommend starting to do Kegels right away and even doing Kegels for 30 minute sessions. I mean, I'm a pelvic PT and I do a lot of Kegels. That's a lot of Kegels. And really a lot of women after they have a baby don't need to focus on strengthening their pelvic floor. It's actually getting the pelvic floor to relax. It worked really, really hard at the end of your pregnancy and to deliver the baby, um, as you know, especially if the baby's born vaginally, but even cesarean, getting those pelvic floor muscles to relax is just as important as getting them to be able to contract. Um, and so you, you can watch all my older videos to learn more about how to do a Kegel, but I want you to think about the elevator in this case, um, or even a zipper where you are going up the elevator or zipping up the vagina and then slowly unzipping or going back down the elevator and making sure that full release happens at the end of the contraction matters to me more than 
how high you can go up. And lastly, even though this isn't a core muscle, focusing on your chin and shoulders. You spend so much time with the new baby looking down, making sure, especially if they're nursing, are they latched okay? There's so much happening that you are trying to pay attention to that you end up getting really rounded and really slumped and, and um, bent down on the chin and start kind of looking like Igor. Not really the cutest look. Um, and so a lot of my new moms, pretty much all my new moms, come into my office with mid-back pain. Um, and that's because they're so rounded all the time, trying to hold their babies either while they're nursing or while they're holding them, rocking them to sleep. Um, and so we really need to work on getting this part um, relaxed too and strengthened. And so what you can think about is check, just doing a little gentle chin tuck. So giving yourself a slight double chin, not a quadruple chin, okay, slow down. Just a little tuck there and then rounding back the shoulder blades. Okay, big picture here. We talked about um, all these different things you can do, but how many should you be doing and for how long and yada, yada, yada. Honestly, if you really want just like specific parameters, once a day, set a timer for one minute and focus on each of those muscle groups. Do the chin and shoulders together, do the breathing, do the belly, do the pelvic floor. Just a minute each for those different groups. But what I really want you thinking about um, as best you can is when you're up and moving around or sitting still holding a baby, but you know, doing other things. I want you thinking about these muscles. Um, so once you feel like you've finally got a latch figured out, check in with yourself. You can still look down and do a chin tuck and squeeze back your shoulder blades. Or you can still be, you know, standing in the shower and thinking about relaxing your pelvic floor. Or sitting in the car and thinking about your breath. The more you can tie these things into your daily life, really the less pain you're going to have and the faster you're going to get back to feeling like yourself. So not just um, strengthening exercises, but stretches too. It's absolutely fine to kind of start stretching after you have a baby. Um, you just want to make sure that you're protecting things like your, um, your abdomen, especially if you have a diastasis, um, to not try to do too many stretches that focus on extension or leaning back. Um, so not too many back bends or um, like up dogs or cobras. Um, but some other really good stretches are um, like a child's pose um, to help stretch out the back, happy baby to help with the pelvic floor and the hips, cat cow um, to help get that spine moving again, to get the shoulders stretched out, um, that old school gym stretch that you used to do, bringing your arm across your body and then actually slumping down will feel really, really good on that mid back. Um, so those are some different stretches that you can do as well. If this just isn't enough and you want um, some more specific guidance from week to week what to do, there are a couple of really great postpartum programs that you can invest in that I recommend as a pelvic floor PT. Uh, I'll link those in the description below, but um, three of the best ones are Expecting and Empowered, um, The Bloom Method, and Get Mom Strong. Those are three really great and reputable um, programs that you can buy to help you feel like you're getting good um, advice by experts to help you get your body back. Even if you really feel like progressing beyond this, be careful. Um, I would wait till your six week appointment with your OB or birthing provider to make sure that you really are safe to start doing stuff. And even more so, um, I'm biased with this, of course, but I would really recommend that you go see a pelvic floor PT um, after that six week postpartum appointment. Um, it's my job to make sure that you get back to doing the things that you love to do, uh, especially after you have a baby. It feels really good to get back to that stuff. So please, please come see us. Please remember, this is a really special time in your life, and it's a really, really hard time in your life, too. Um, give yourself a lot of grace. Remember that less is more, and resting is fine. It's okay. So what questions do you have? Happy to answer them down below. Don't worry about that like or subscribe thing. It's not really my thing either. I'm just here to help you understand more about your body. If that's something you're into, watch more videos. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Bye.